I'm going to go ahead and call the uh, council special presentation ceremony uh, to order at 5.04. Uh, we have a list of presentations. The first presentation is a presentation of National Safe Boating Week uh, and proclamation. I'd like to invite Tony up to the microphone to talk a little bit about National Safe Boating Week, and then I'll present a proclamation at the conclusion of your remarks. Good evening, Council. My name is Ed Dixon. I am the um, past commander, flotilla commander for Flotilla 6-1. This is Tony. He is um, our commander at this time. 461. We have Kenny, and we also have Ingrid, also members of the auxiliary. Um, this organization is a organization that is a 100% volunteer. We are, this particular group is located, uh, our flotilla is located out of Homestead. We're located at the MSST uh, affiliation with um, Coast Guard over at um, uh, Homestead Air Reserve Base. And our biggest thing right now is to focus on boater safety. That's the biggest thing. I know that um, we in Homestead are looking at a, um, a month focus we do it all year round but national safe boater week is a week-long uh, process uh, that is normally done the week prior to uh, memorial day and uh, what we do we do classes a lot of different types of classes um, we have what we call abs about boating safety we also do a uh, longer version of a boating class our focus is to show the community safety. We want to make sure, because if we're safe on the water, there's a lot less accidents. We let people know all the hazards. In the state of Florida, it is a requirement for anybody that is born after January 1, 1988, to get a certification with the state of Florida. We offer that certification. It's, in a lot of times, we do have uh, areas that it is free. I do a per personally, I work with the Miami-Dade Public Schools. We do a class. Every year we do a class. Low end in the last couple years has been 200 people into one class, and they're all students. And basically we feed them, we do everything, we give them an opportunity to take the class and pass the class. We do this at a high school. We hope that more high schools can do this also. It's a big thing. Uh, think about this, over 200 kids getting certified to get this class. It's amazing. And they learn about boating safety. It's an all-day class. We do it on a Saturday. And we offer this uh, to, we will offer it, I know this, to any school wishing to do it. We'll offer it to anybody in the community. And um, our main focus, as I say, is the boating safety of the community. We want to take care of, we reach out to the community. You'll see us many times, the Veterans Day Parade, we're in it. But we're trying to get the exposure to make sure the people are safe. That is the most important thing that we can offer for the, uh, from our side, the Coast Guard. And hopefully law enforcement doesn't have to do anything in, out there to hinder anybody's enjoyment of the water. And especially the last thing we want is a tragedy. And unfortunately, there have been many of them, and we want to just make sure that we can help prevent that by us being out there, prevents that as much as possible. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. I'll come down and present the proclamation. Thank you. Can I just ask a question? Yes, sir. Uh, excuse me for coming in late. This wonderful traffic got me today. I know that my son had taken a class up at Old Cutler, uh, off of Old Cutler at the Deering Bay uh, um, Estates that way. I don't know if you guys are tied in with them and, and help with the class, but they had been looking for a place to do a class down here, and we had offered, or I had offered them some assistance, and then I never heard back from any of them. I don't know if you guys have. Well, we are, um, our organization, we're the local, we're your local organization okay. for the Coast Guard. We are the on to the Coast Guard, yep. and we also offer this class. If you want Okay, well, that was the auxiliary up there also teaching. Right, we have. So, and so they're, a different, they're a different branch. We have 
Kinda. In this, in the Miami market, if you will, there are seven different flotillas. Okay. Uh, we are the furthest one south in Miami, which is the homestead, and we take care of Florida City Homestead. As I said, we're over uh, at um, Homestead Air Reserve Base. Yep. That's where we're located. Um, I know I live in the community. I live I've right seen down you around many times. You have. <laughs> <laughs> I do live in the community. Um, but if a class is requested, um, we can, we'll be more than happy to uh, set one up okay. and do I just didn't know if you guys were tied in with them because we had Absolutely. We teach we the same it. material. We teach the same right. material. I'll reach out to you by email. And okay. Then. And I can't remember the gentleman's name, but I know that they, they had quite a crowd up there and, you know, they were, and they learned that we were, came up from Homestead and they were, they were like, we would love to come down there and teach class. And I said, well, we've got a perfect We can week. do that. We, we can, can facilitate that so. and make that happen. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for all you guys do out there. Perfect. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Yeah, I think it's important. I mean, just culminating here with Memorial Day weekend was typically the kickoff of summer and also when everybody's out on the water. And so it's critical to make sure everybody understands the proper rules and regulations uh, so they can all operate their boats, have fun with their family out on the water, especially out here. We've got Biscayne National Park, you know, and so it's great to make sure that everybody makes, follows the rules, doesn't cause damage to the environment, but also to each other. So I appreciate all that you guys are doing. And as the Vice Mayor said, it'd be great to you know, partner with you guys and actually find a time and a date and promote it and publicize it and have a, a public presentation of these boater safety rules here in the city of Homestead. And so this, I also have a proclamation to present for Safe Boating Month. And it says, whereas for nearly 100 million Americans, boating continues to be a popular recreational activity from coast to coast and everywhere in between. People are taking to the water, enjoying time together, boating, sailing, paddling, and fishing. And whereas during National Safe Boating Week, the U.S. Coast Guard and its federal, state, and local safe boating partners encourage all boaters to explore and enjoy America's beautiful waters responsibly. And whereas the Coast Guard estimates that human error accounts for 70% of all boating accidents and that life jackets could prevent nearly 85% of boating fatalities. And whereas through basic boating safety procedures, carrying life-saving emergency distress and communications equipment, wearing life jackets, attending safe boating courses, participating in free boat safety checks, and staying sober when navigating, we can help ensure boaters on America's coastal, inland, and offshore waters stay safe throughout the season. And whereas National Safe Boating Week is observed to bring attention to important life-saving tips for recreational boaters so that they can have a safer, more fun experience out on the water throughout the year, now therefore I, Stephen Shelley, the Mayor of the City of Homestead, Florida, does hereby support the goals of the Safe Boating Campaign and proclaim this 29th day of May 2019 as Safe Bo Boating Month and Safe Boating Day in Homestead. Thank you very much. Do you want to do a real quick picture and then we'll do that? I'd now like to invite up uh, for a special presentation, Eddie Garza for Ride to Revive. Talk a little bit about the program. Thank you, Mayor. Should, uh... Good afternoon. My name is Eddie Garza. It's great to be here. Today I'm representing Ride to Revive. Founded by brother and sister Brooke and Brett David in 2011, fulfilling a dream to share the world of exotic automobiles, this unique and altruistic organization called Ride to Revive provides miles of smiles on the road to recovery for children who are battling life-threatening illnesses. This was uh, done in northern Miami somewhere for a few years, but I was able to connect with Brett, and when they were beginning to look for a home, I mentioned Homestead and the Homestead Miami Speedway. We were able to connect with the government here and thankfully, in 2017, for the first time, we were able to bring this beautiful event to Homestead. That year, we featured 60 supercars and 50 children battling these terrible, terrible diseases. Well, I'm very happy to report that this year, with your support, we had over 100 supercars registered this year, and over 100 children from across South Florida 
were able to take part in this beautiful, beautiful day. Now, what happens is these children, as you know, it's so hard going in and out of treatment, so many different tests, so many different ways to battle cancer, either through the chemo or through the different uh, uh, shots that they take. When a child's able to have a day that's away from that, that they can just put their mind into something fun, be given a little inspiration, it's huge. And so thankfully, on this day, every single kid forgets all about whatever battle they're fighting and thinks all about that day, right? A Lamborghini, a Bugatti, a Ferrari, beautiful supercars that we bring down and just whip them around that track as fast as we can legally by all the different standards, of course. But it can't be done by ourselves. And so I'd like to personally thank a few people. All of you make this possible, but a few individuals have been working with me to make this happen. And working with the, the David family, Prestige Imports Lamborghini Miami. I'd first like to thank Lieutenant Trad, Lieutenant Tony Trad of the City of Homestead Police Department K-9 unit. If it wasn't for him and his support, we would not have had those K-9 demonstrations every year, which now the kids look forward to. And in fact, because we keep constant communication throughout the year with these kids, they've already asked, are the dogs coming back? So we're looking forward to that. We'd also like to thank Chief Alexander Roll. Without Chief Alexander Roll's support, we would have never been able to even reach out to, to, to Lieutenant Trad. So I want to thank Chief Alexander Roll. And last but certainly not least, Mayor Shelley. Thank you, Mayor. With your blessing, we're able to make all these contacts happen. With your blessing, we're able to bring these children down here and give them a great day to continue fighting for their life. So thank you so very much. I'd like to please ask you, Mayor, to join me here because on behalf of Ride to Revive, we have a small plaque, a small token of our appreciation. And I do want to mention that um, past years, we've kind of kept it under wraps because we want to keep the focus on the kids. And while that will be the case, this year we are inviting all of the council members to join us for the 2020 Ride to Revive. So we look forward for you all being there. We'll, be, we'll let you know with advance. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Our next presentation, um, presentation of SO SAS Homestead Proclamation for being the number one high school in Miami-Dade County, Councilwoman Fairclough. Good evening, everyone. Dr. Monteguro can please join me up front. Thank you for being here. In the city of Homestead, we recognize the value in having high-performing schools in our community, and we're so grateful for your leadership and everything that you have done at School for Advanced Studies Homestead Campus to not only put your school on the map, but also to put our city on the map. So I am honored tonight to present a proclamation to you and the SAS family for being ranked the number one high school in Miami-Dade County, number two in the state of Florida, and number 26 in the United States of America. So let's give our principal, Dr. Omar Monteagudo, a round of applause. So as a point of pride and privilege, I'd like to present the following, whereas the School for Advanced Studies Homestead Campus, a partnership between Miami-Dade College and Miami-Dade County Public Schools, is celebrating 30 years of excellence this year. You had a ceremony recently at the Freedom Tower, I believe, yes. School for Advanced Study Homestead has been consistently ranked as one of the best high schools in the United States, and this year was designated by the U.S. News & World Report as the number one high school in Miami-Dade County, whereas SAS has consistently been designated an A-rated school by the state of Florida, whereas 100% of SAS Homestead graduates in recent years have earned an Associates of Arts degree from Miami-Dade College 
college a month before graduation. And whereas SAS has consistently produced students recognized for extraordinary service projects that have resulted in SAS Homestead being one of the leaders in Silver Knights Awards each year, with majority of the graduates being admitted into the top 50 colleges and universities. Now, therefore, our mayor, Stephen Shelley, the mayor of the city of Homestead, Florida, do congratulate SAS for 30 years of educational excellence by proclaiming Wednesday, May 29th, 2019, as Homestead Schools for Advanced Studies Day in the city of Homestead. Congratulations. Uh, first and foremost, thank you, uh, Councilwoman uh, Faircloth, and to the City Council and to the Mayor. Uh, we just want to make sure that the residents of Homestead understand and realize that you have a premier cream of the crop school located here in this city. And it's very important that we have these students remain here in this city where they're able to avail themselves of every single opportunity that is afforded to students in various communities in this district. They do not have to leave the boundaries of Homestead to find a high rated quality education. And as the councilwoman pointed out, not only are we ranked, but when you take a look at the amount of scholarships, Friday's our graduation, over $42 million in scholarship afforded to our students, 100% graduation, 100% going on to a four-year institution of higher learning, 100% of our students uh, receiving the Associate in Arts degree from Miami Dade College, and most importantly, uh, over 60% of our students being admitted into a top 50 college university, including every single Ivy League institution in this country. So the Dream Factory is alive. It is here in Homestead. We have it in five campuses. We're just so honored to have it here across the street. And anytime that any of you would love to visit, we'll love to have you there. It's a great partnership. We're fortunate to be here. And what we need from you is to get the word out to the residents of this community. You have a phenomenal school here. Make sure that you take advantage of it. It's a dream factory. Uh, come realize your full dreams and potentials. Thank you. So uh, I didn't really expect to speak, um, but I have a few words for all of you wonderful people and Dr. Montegudo. Um, it's hard for me to not get a little bit emotional. I came from a wonderful school, Somerset Academy, Silver Palms, but SAS, ever since I first came here, it's, I feel like it's really given me the opportunity and the tools and the resources to really achieve my highest potential. I would have done great at my old school, but SAS with you know um, my AA and, and all the resources that I'm offered, our, our wonderful counselor who's constantly giving us scholarships and pushing us to do our best, our wonderful teachers, I, I just feel like I can do so much more than I could have ever done. And so for that, I really have to thank you, Dr. Montegudo, and, and all of you wonderful people for supporting our school and us as a school. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilwoman. Our next presentation is presentation to the winners of the Community Relations Board Spring Essay Contest, uh, Councilman Roth. Good evening, everyone. I see we have some nice gifts for some well-deserving individuals today. 
the Homestead Florida City Community Relations Board Committee agreed that there is no age too early to get involved with our community. Last fall, the committee created a contest to get students civically active in our cities. Since they had such a successful contest last time, they decided to make it a seasonal contest. And this spring, we asked our youth what some changes they would like to see. And we had many submissions, and we awarded uh, three places, first, second, and third. So I'd like to invite up Ajayla Springle. Are you here? Malav Patel. And AJ Evans. Now each of them were asked to write um, an essay in reference to the community and how they could help or better serve. And we just took some excerpts out of uh, their essays. And Ajayla Springle, you've won third place. And actually, you're a repeat winner, right? You won last year too, right? Congratulations. Yeah, it's talent. I mean, and, and I was looking around because she quoted or mentioned Councilwoman Faircloth, and she gave credit to her for her work that she does with the Mayor's Youth Council. But she also wanted to see more student and youth engagement within the city uh, with hands-on learning opportunities like internships. And I, and I think that's an excellent idea, and maybe somebody will take note of that, uh, that we, we have students, we have children that are living and learning in our community. They are learning about our community and want to help us as leaders improve our community. And what better way for them to do that than spend some time with us, with the city staff, learning what city government's all about and how to, commu uh, how to you know, participate in the community. So with that, for third place, you are receiving a Galaxy tablet. So hopefully that'll help you explore the world more and encourage you to learn more about what we do here in the city as well. Malav Patel, congratulations. He wanted us to care more about wildlife in this city. The manatees at Biscayne National Park, stray pets that are abandoned in the Redlands. You know, it's amazing to me that children actually know that that goes on, that, that pets are abandoned in the Redlands. And, and I congratulate for you knowing that and for actually bringing it to our attention. Um, Malav also wanted us to take care of the environment by walking and carpooling. So that helps with saving energy and other things like that. You also are receiving, for second place, congratulations, a Samsung tablet. Thank you. You're welcome. Don't go away. Stay up here. And AJ Evans. Congratulations, AJ. First place in the, the Community Re Relations Board's essay contest. AJ would like to see our cities. And he says cities because the Community Relations Board is a, is a, a two-city organization, Homestead and Florida City. Uh, help the less fortunate with more food drives and assistance to those less fortunate. And, and that's very commendable as well, that you realize that there are people, not only in our cities, but in the state and all over the country, that are much less fortunate than we are and to reach out to them and to lift their lives as well. So that's a very important lesson in life, that you want to pay it forward, you want to help others, and you want to lift their lives as well. I commend you for that. Um, and with that, the grand prize, a laptop. You're very welcome. Now, your parents are here, so this is the opportunity to come up and get your pictures taken. So come on up, parents. All of you, come on. Don't be shy. And we'll get some pictures taken.
it always amazes me to see our youth always getting involved and concerned about the cities that we represent and, and being involved with the community. That concludes, Mayor. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Councilman Roth. Our final presentation is the 2019 graduation ceremony with Councilwoman Faircloth. Okay, so that song really never gets old, does it? <laughs> so as the liaison from the City of Homestead to the Education Committee and our Youth Council, it gives me great pleasure to present to our community the three graduating seniors from our Youth Council. On today, I had the opportunity to shake 756 hands of graduating seniors. And it was only fitting that we replicate that tonight here at our council chambers for students who have committed thousands of hours of community service and have given back so much to our community. So, I think I left my paper up there. So I just want to brag a little bit about the seniors that will be graduating tonight. Sydney Lee from in. Raise your hand, Sydney. Sydney is graduating from Miami Palmetto Senior High School, attending the University of Florida, majoring in computer engineering with a minor in constitutional law. She is also a recipient of the Homestead Rotary Club Scholarship. Rounds of applause for Sydney. Congratulations, Sydney. Kayla Montezon, graduating from Homestead Miami Arts Charter School, attending Miami-Dade College Homestead Campus, majoring in visual arts with a minor in education. She is a recipient of the Silver Knight Scholarship, Homestead Center of the Arts Scholarship, Police Officers Assistant Trust, and the Fraterner Order of Police Scholarship. Congratulations, Kayla. Renee Seely, graduating from Mass Medical at Homestead, attending the Harriet L. Wilkes Honor College of Florida Atlantic University, majoring in business and a double minor in law and sociology philosophy. She is a recipient of the Henry Morrison Flagler Scholarship, Full Merit Scholar Scholarship, Homestead Rotary Scholarship, and the HCA Healthcare Scholarship. Congratulations, Renee Seely. As you can see, the members of the Mayor's Youth Council, the award-winning Youth Council, they are very active in their community, and they do not let that get in the way of their academics. They've moved on to Ivy League schools. We have another NYC alum here in the audience, Ashley Seely, who is very active with us, and I am so proud of the work that you have done in our community and I challenge you to continue to serve on your college campuses just as active as you have served in the city of Homestead. We are all here to support you. We wish you all the best, and we love you here in the city of Homestead. Thank you so much for your heart to serve.
That concludes our special presentation, uh, council's presentation ceremony today. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and adjourn, and then we'll reconvene at 6 o'clock for the regular scheduled council meeting. Thank you. I would like to call the Wednesday, May 29, 2019 council meeting to order at 6 p.m. This evening, we will have the invocation by Reverend Howard Harden, pastor of the First Baptist Church of Homestead, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance with Councilman Guzman and Homestead Police Explorers. Would you please stand? Our Lord and our God, we thank you that we can be gathered here today in this place, and we thank you for the freedom with which we have been blessed and for those who've sacrificed to make that freedom possible. And we thank you for your many blessings on this great city. We thank you as well for our many public servants that are represented here tonight who serving in various capacities again and again go above and beyond the call of duty and service to this community. We ask your blessings especially upon them. And we acknowledge that you know best the problems that are before us and the solutions to those problems. So we ask you for wisdom from on high. We ask you to bless every decision that is made as well as the manner in which they are made. And I pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Please be seated. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Guzman. Councilman Guzman. Here. Councilwoman Fierclon. Here. Councilwoman Bailey. Here. Councilman Maldonado. Councilman Roth. Here. Vice Mayor Burgess. Here. Mayor Shelley. Here. Any additions, deletions, or deferrals? Seeing none, consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? Dude, moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Ayes carry. Five public hearings. Yes, please be advised the following items on the agenda are quasi judicial in nature. If you wish to comment upon any of these items, please indicate the item number you would like to address when the announcement regarding the quasi judicial item is made. An opportunity for persons to speak on each item will be made available after the applicant and staff have made their presentations on each item. Swearing in, all testimony, including public testimony and evidence, will be made under oath or affirmation. <laughs> Additionally, each person who gives testimony may be subject to cross-examination. If you do not wish to either be cross-examined or sworn, your testimony will be given its due weight. The general public will not be permitted to cross-examine witnesses, but the public may request the council to ask questions of staff or witnesses on their behalf. The full agenda packet on each item is hereby entered into the record. Persons representing organizations must present evidence of their authority to speak for the organization. Further details of the quasi-judicial procedures may be obtained from the clerk. In accordance with Code Section 2-591, any lobbyist must register before addressing the council on any of the following items. At this time, council members must disclose any ex parte communications concerning any items on the agenda. Hearing on at this time, I'll ask the clerk to swear in any persons who wish to testify on the quasi-judicial items. So anyone in the audience who's here who wishes to speak on uh, tab 11 or 12, uh, please stand, raise your right hand to be sworn by the clerk. Please repeat after me, I state your name, hereby swear or affirm that the information I present shall be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Thank you, you may be seated. Mayor, tabs 11 and 12 pertain to the same uh, uh, property, same development, one's for site plan, one's for special exception. I can introduce both of those.
could have a collective conversation, public hearing on it, and take a separate vote on each item. All right, any objections from our colleagues? <coughs> I'll see you now. Go ahead and read on both. Great. So tab 11 is a resolution of the city of Homestead, Florida, proving a special exception requested by Lorenzo Enterprise Corp. <coughs> excuse me, to permit commercial retail use exceeding 20,000 square feet of usable floor area of an approximately 7.44 acre parcel of land in the retail commercial business, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> B2 zoning district <coughs> generally, permit, generally located at 3725 South Federal Highway as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. <clears throat> Tab 12 is a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida granting site plan modification approval requested by Lorenzo Enterprise Corps to permit a 54,000 50 square foot automobile dealership on an approximately 7.44 acre parcel generally located at 3725 South Federal Highway as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. Staff report. Yes, sir. We're Yes, sir. We're, our staff is recommending the uh, mayor and council approve both the uh, special exception and the site plan. Effectively, the, uh, the site exists as a, an existing automobile dealership in the first place. Uh, it's been <coughs> sold to a, a different brand name. Brands coming in and they want to do some repairs uh, or rehabilitation on the south side of the property. And so what they're going to do is demolish. There's three buildings on the site now. They're going to demolish some of them. They're effectively going to rebuild almost exactly the same square footage as they had, just new materials. Uh, what they're doing is conforming to both our site plan uh, regulations and our special exception regulations. So I'll answer any questions. If not, we uh, we're recommending approval. Perfect, thank you. Any questions for staff? Seeing none, uh, this is a public hearing open to the public. Any questions or comments for the public on tabs 11 or tabs 12? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, does the applicant wish to, or, or is the applicant here? Do they wish to, want to say anything? or? Okay. Um, do I have a motion to approve? On this tab 11, we'll do them each individually. Tab moved by Vice Mayor. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Faircloth. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Faircloth? Yes. Councilman Guzman? Yes. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilman Roth? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Shelley? Yes. The motion carries. Tab 12, do I have a motion on tab 12? Moved. Moved, do I have a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilman Roth? Yes. Councilwoman Faircloth? Yes. Councilman Guzman? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Shelley? Yes. The motion carries. Tab 13. Yes, tab 13 is the second reading of an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending the City Code of Ordinances by amending Chapter 24, streets, sidewalks, and other public places, Article 1 in general, and Article 2, streets, to provide for an exception to the prohibition on the use of public rights-of-way for valley parking operations along the Chrome Avenue corridor, located within the City's Arts, Entertainment, and Antiques District, pursuant to City-approved valley parking program, providing for separability, providing for inclusion in the code, providing for conflicts, and providing for an effective date. This is second and final reading. See no questions from council. This is a public hearing. I open to the public on tab 13. Any questions or comments from the public? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Do I have a, a motion? Move Moved, do I have a second? second. Uh, roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Guzman? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclaw? Yes. Councilman Maldonado? Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilman Roth? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Shelley? Yes. The motion carries. Tab 14. Oh. There you go. Ms. Wright, this is an ordinance for second reading. It's an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending the budgets for each of the several funds and departments of the city for the fiscal year beginning October 1, 2018, and ending September 30th, 2019 by increasing the total budgeted revenues and expenditures by $15,010,873, providing for a repealer, severability, and an effective date. Staff report. Staff recommends that the mayor and council approve the amend, the, and amend the fiscal year 2019 budget for the Cyber Fund and the general fund as per attached schedule to appropriate the balance of funding needed to complete the Cyber project. The first reading was on 4-17-2019. Any questions from council? Vice Mayor Burgess. Uh, to the staff, could because I think there's some misrepresentation out there about where these funds 
uh, for the cyber and all are coming from and that uh, we're going into debt for this. Could <clears throat> perhaps somebody from staff just clarify that, that these funds are, are where they're coming from and all that for the general public so that there are, we can clean up some of these misrepresentations that are out there. Carlos. Uh, yes, Mayor and Council. Um, there's various sources, um, primarily even though these are coming from the general fund reserves, um, a lot of these funds were generated or they were expected to be reimbursed into the general fund. An example of this is um, CRA monies from 2020, 500,000 is included in some of that money. Um, for CDBG from next year's funds, $300,000 is also included in those funding. A uh, future grant that the city's been actively pursuing would also be reimbursed back to the general fund after this is done. Um, there's also some monies from projects in the downtown area that have generated some savings. So those have also been included in the monies that are being set aside for the for the uh, cyber project. Now, these are this budget amendment is predominantly just for the funding that's coming from the general fund. In addition to that, already sitting in the cyber fund, you had the initial funds that came from the sale of the bowling alley, those proceeds that have been used for consulting and design, and also the city has a $3.8 million loan from HUD that would be repaid over the next 20 years from CDBG funds. So those are predominantly some of the funding sources. But again, what's before you tonight is moving monies from the general fund over to the cyber fund. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Council Vice Mayor. Any additional questions or comments from Council? Seeing none, this is a public hearing. Open to the public hearing on tab 14. Anybody like to speak on tab 14? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion? Move. Move. Do I have a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilman Guzman? Yes. Councilwoman Fearful? Yes. Councilman Raw? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Shelley? Yes. The motion carries. Tab 15. Tab 15 is an ordinance for first reading. It's an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending the, the City of Homestead Code of Ordinances by amending Section 10-2, Time and Manner of Qualification of Candidates, by amending Section 10-2-2, Vice Mayor Ballot, providing for severability, providing for inclusion in the code, providing for an effective date. Staff report. Yes, Mayor. Staff recommends that the Mayor and Council approve the proposed ordinance amending the time frame within which candidates for the City Council must notify the clerk of their desire not to appear on the ballot for the position of Vice Mayor so the City Clerk can notify the Miami-Dade County Supervisor of Elections in time to ensure that the general election ballots accurately reflect the will of the candidates. The Miami-Dade County Supervisor of Elections has requested this change to the City's code in order to meet their deadline for the mailing of vote by mail ballots for the city's general election. All right, thank you. It's my understanding that uh, this, this came from Miami-Dade County. They originally wanted us to have our candidates or uh, declare prior to the election or the primary election occurring, which would have caused some different from strategic standpoint, I guess, as, as people are going through the election process. I know that uh, our clerk you know, pushed back and fought hard in order to give us a reasonable period of time to make those decisions as we're going through the election process and was able to get a 48 hour window. So I do thank you for, for fighting hard for, for the city so we have as many options as possible. Uh, but ultimately this was initiated by, by Miami-Dade County, correct? Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank okay. you. Any questions uh, for staff or by, by council? Seeing none, city manager, do you have additional? Okay. This is a public hearing, I'll open it to the public. Anybody would like to speak on tab 15? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Uh, do I have a motion? Moved and seconded. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Raw? Yes. Councilwoman Fearclaw? Yes. Councilman Guzman? Yes. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Shelley? Yes. The motion carries. Tab 16. Mayor, this is a motion to approve a bid award. Staff recommends that the Mayor and Council authorize the City Manager to award ITB number 201925 to U.S. Auto Radiator Supply Company of Broward doing business as three-star radiator in the amount of $57,562 for the repair of two air water heat exchanger units for engine 19 at the Gordon W. Ivey Municipal Power Plant. This project is not part of the Cap City's CIP plan. The two air water heater exchanger units for engine 19 are found to be leaking and defective during testing and need to be remanufactured and replaced in order to ensure proper engine operation. 
Any questions uh, from council? Seeing none, this is a public hearing. Any questions uh, from the public on tab 16? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion? Moved. Moved, do I have second? Second. Moved and second, roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Bailey? Councilman Guzman? Yes. Councilman Ross? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclough? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Shelley? Yes. The motion carries. Tab 17. Mr. Mayor, tab 17 is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving an interlocal agreement with Miami-Dade County for temporary bus shelter installation on the transit way north of Mowry Drive, providing for implementation, providing for an effective date. Staff report. Yes, Mayor. Staff recommends that the Mayor and Council approve the attached resolution authorizing the City Manager to enter into an interlocal agreement in substantially the form attached with Miami-Dade County for the installation of temporary bus shelters on the busway north of Mowry Drive. The bus rapid transit station to be built by Miami-Dade County adjacent to Homestead Station will not be completed by the scheduled October 2019 of Homestead, opening of Homestead Station. In order to accommodate passengers utilizing Homestead Station, staff is recommending that the city install temporary bus shelters, which will be removed when the BRT station opens. Exhibit one shows where the proposed shelters will go, as well as the type of shelter, and this, ILA has been drafted in conjunction with the Miami-Dade County staff, and we're hoping that they're able to bring that to their commission for final approval by, before their August break. There's two companion cars to this item, the first of which is for the purchase of the bus shelters, and the second of which is for engineering services to design the slab for installation. Once the design is completed, the construction and installation will be put out to bid and brought back to council for approval. Any questions from council? Seeing none, this, uh, Councilman Guzman. I'm looking at Exhibit A, and I'm trying to figure out where does X mark the spot for these temporary. So if you if you imagine the busway just north of Maori Drive, on either side of the busway, there'll be two for the section going north, and one on the other side for southbound buses. Okay, that, would that be right here? Because you know. This isn't, isn't in color. So. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you, Councilman. Any additional questions? Seeing none, this is a public hearing open to the public for tab 17. Any questions or comments from the public? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion? Moved. Do I have a second? Moved and seconded. Uh, roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Guzman? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclough? Yes. Councilman Ross? Yes. Councilwoman Bailey? Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Shelley? Yes. The motion carries. Tab 18. Tab 18 is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving purchase from Brasco International for fabricated bus shelters for a total amount not to exceed $45,775, utilizing the Ben Franklin Transit Bus Stop and Transit Shelters contract number 1103, providing for implementation and providing for an effective date. Staff report. Yes, Mayor, this is the first of the two companion cars. Staff recommends that the Mayor and Council approve the attached resolution authorizing the city manager to purchase three bus shelters from B Brasco International. This purchase will be made in accordance with the Ben Franklin Transit Bus Stop and Transit Shelters contract number 1103. The total cost for the shelters is $45,775. Any questions from council? Seeing none, this is a public hearing. I'll open to the public on tab 18. Any questions or comments from the public? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion to approve? Moved and seconded. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Ross? Yes. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclough? Yes. Councilman Guzman? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Shelley? Yes. The motion carries. Tab 19. Tab 19 is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Homestead, Florida, accepting the proposal for engineering services from EAC Consulting, Inc. for a total amount not to exceed $70,386, authorizing the City Manager to issue work authorization, providing for implementation, and providing for an effective date. Staff report. Yes, Mayor, this is the second, com the second of the companion cars. Staff recommends that the Mayor and Council approve the attached resolution authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement with EAC Consulting 
for professional engineering services to design structural slabs for the installation of the temporary bus shelters for a sum not to exceed $70,386. Any questions from council? Seeing none, uh, this is a public hearing. I open it a public hearing for tab 19. Uh, any questions or comments from the public? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion to approve? Yes. Move, do I have a second? Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Fiecklo? Yes. Councilman Ross? Yes. Councilman Guzman? Yes. Councilwoman Bailey? Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Shelley? Yes. The motion carried. Tab 20. Tab 20 is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving the settlements of all claims of Crown Castle Fiber LLC, providing for an effective date. Staff report. Yes, Mayor. Staff recommends that Mayor and Council approve the attached resolution authorizing the City Manager to settle with Crown Castle Fiber LLC for a total of $50,000. On or about September 14th, 2017, four days after Hurricane Irma, underground fiber lines owned by Crown Castle Fiber located at 405 Roberts Road and Northwest 4th Street were allegedly damaged by the city who was in the process of replacing downed power poles. Crown Castle was willing to sign a general release extinguishing any and all claims including all past, present, and future claims arising from the incident including but not limited to all physical damages, replacement of equipment, labor, vendor expenses, lost profits, and or loss of use in all of the types of claims inclusive of all costs and attorney's fees for the lump sum of $50,000. Any questions from Council? Seeing none, uh, this is a public hearing. I open it to the public on tab 20. Any questions or comments from the public? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion to approve? Move. Moved and seconded. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Ross? Yes. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Councilman Guzman? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclaw? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Shelley? Yes. The motion carries. Tab 21. Tab 21 is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving the settlements of all claims of Joan A. Romeo Cueto and Paula Guerrero, providing for an effective date. Staff report. Ms. Mayor, staff recommends that the Mayor and Council approve the attached resolution authorizing the City Manager to settle with Joan A. Romeo Cueto and Paula Guerrero for a total sum of $150,000 on or about May 14, 2016. The plaintiff sustained injuries when a city employee allegedly operated a motor vehicle in a negligent manner, causing the city vehicle to collide with the vehicle the plaintiffs were traveling in. On April 5, 2019, the plaintiffs in the city attended mediation and negotiated a settlement agreement, and the plaintiffs are willing to sign a general release extinguishing any and all claims, including all past, present, and future claims arising from the incident, inclusive of, of all costs and attorney's fees for the lump sum amount of $150,000. Any questions from council? Seeing none, it uh, says a public hearing open to the public on tab 21. Any questions or comments from the public? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Do I have a motion to approve? Second. Moved and seconded. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Guzman? Yes. Councilwoman Fairclaw? Yes. Councilman Ross? Yes. Councilwoman Bailey? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Shelley? Yes. The motion carries. Uh, public comments. I will now open the floor for public comments. Each individual will have three minutes uh, to speak. When your name is called, please come to the podium and state your name and address for the record. The first I have here is Kenny Senat. No? Okay. Next is Kim Hill. Good afternoon, Kim Hill. Uh, how you doing, Miss Bailey? How you doing, Mr. Roth? I tell you, had an old grand, grand, grand uncle, and he looked at me on the southwest side, and he said, son, they'd rather see a monkey with a diamond ring than to catch us with anything. Last week, you had a special call meeting, and it proved I didn't want him to be right, but I've seen this. I'm witnessing this. Special call me about the Ultra Fest. Now this Ultra Fest is, was designed to bring in drugs in this community. And I think, Mr. Guzman, that you voted against it. And I was thankful that you did that. You had a moral compass. Mr. Roth did not have a moral compass. He went to, he went to making excuses about how much money you would lose and everything. Ms. Bailey, have you ever held a drug addicted baby in your arms? 
Ms. Faircloth, have you ever tried to educate a drug-addicted baby in school? It's a difficult process, isn't it? You know that. And we, how much money do we spend on it? But we're going to welcome drug dealers inside our community. That required for you, Mr. Roth, to have a moral compass. But you were bankrupt on that. And last week, I saw Mr. Rowe. Mr. Rowe was in a restaurant with the city manager. And the city manager, Larry Roth, he sneezed. Mr. Rowe looked over and said, what's the matter, boss? We sick? Well, those shenanigans were played out last week. We had the police department sitting up advocating drugs. But when you were asked, Ms. Bailey, to investigate the body camera, you can do that. You can call a special call meeting on that. You cannot afford the citizens on the southwest side that luxury, but you immediately dug up all the information to allow drugs in our community. Mr. Rowe could not, you know, Mr. Wright and all of them, they could not do a comparative analysis. They couldn't go to the city of Durrell. They couldn't go to the city of Atlanta. They couldn't go to New York and compare the city's own body cameras to save black lives and to save all lives, but they could go for the ultra fist to bring the dope in. Bring the dope in. I was just in Cuba, and they don't have a third grade failure syndrome. And I say, wow, that's amazing. People that look just like me and you, Mr. Guzman. These little boys don't have a, fail, a third grade failure syndrome. You know what the guy told me? He said, we don't have drugs over here. Their mamas are not on drugs. So as though the ultra fest will not have a residual factor on our community. That was amazing what you did. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Have a good day, Ms. Bailey. Next is Susan Sorrentino. Please state your name and address for the record. Hi, Susan Sorrentino. I live at 2610 Northeast Third Drive uh, in the Homestead. Um, I believe that Artist in the Spotlight program at the Seminole Theater has pretty much fallen between the cracks. And I'll tell you why. After I removed the last show at the end of March, there was no new show going up. So Carlos decided to leave some of his things, which is great, except there's no new shows scheduled that we know of. We have been emailing, uh, trying to get information, trying to reserve spaces. We used to have Michelle Wells as a contact. She did respond and said that she's not handling that anymore. We don't know why our emails are going without response, and it's very frustrating, especially when you walk into a beautiful theater who has things going on and empty walls. And it's the only place we have in Homestead for an artist to show collectively you know, what they do. All the other shows that go up around this city are pretty much all-inclusive. Everyone puts up one piece but there's no place like a gallery, and that's as close as we get, and I'm so thankful for it. At the community center where uh, the Spotlight program used to be, they have the apparatus. These little hooks were removed from the apparatus to go to Seminole. So then when I heard we could put things up there if you belong, I went and there were no hooks. So I borrowed them from the Seminole Theater. Mickey uh, told me I could take some. And I've been requesting replacement hooks now for over a year. Um, what's happened at the community center is everyone's very enthused about showing their work, all the community, from the little art room or whatever. And so they're double, triple hanging artwork on the rods, which is great, except we've run out of the hooks. On the hook, it has the name where you order them. If you can order, like, 50 hooks and we can split them up between the two locations, we could keep it going. Uh, the community center is pretty much self-governed and it's working great. Um, then the second issue is public art committee meeting that was canceled last week. Um, I don't think they have a full committee and that's why I couldn't find minutes from any meetings they've had. I've been here two and a half years. 
I can't be on that committee. Um, I can't volunteer for it because I'm an artist and I'm making my living making art and I don't want to see any conflicts. So we need to pay attention to that. There's art in public places money that we have accrued as a community. When I first got here, I said, oh, wow, there must be an art community here, not even a single gallery. So we need to get Perfect. Thank you very much. on with that. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you very much. That's all the cards I have for public comment today. Um, next up is business from the city manager. Nothing from the city manager, business from the city attorney, or city attorney's report. I have to re request a, a few executive sessions, okay. so just indulge me for a moment. I would like to request an executive session in the matter of McDonough v. Mata et al. It's case number 119, CV 21986 in the United States Southern District. Um, another one for McDonough v. City of Homestead, case number 19-06869 in the 11th Judicial Circuit for Miami-Dade County. McDonough v. Eric Stetton et al. in the 11th Judicial Circuit, <laughs> um, case number 17-17515, um, McDonough versus City of Homestead <laughs> et al. in the United States Court of Appeals for the 11th Circuit, case number 18-13263, um, Lillet Sports Complex v. City of Homestead, case number 12-18. Uh, 206 in the 11th Judicial Circuit for Miami-Dade County, City of Homestead versus Lillet Sports Complex, 13, case number 13-14353 in the 11th Judicial Circuit for Miami-Dade County, and Keysgate Condo Association, number seven, Inc. v. City of Homestead, case number 19-150 in Miami-Dade County. Thank you, City Attorney. Uh, reports for Mayor and Council. Councilman Roth. Nothing today. Councilman Roth. Uh, Councilman Guzman. Nope. Nothing from Councilman Guzman. Councilwoman Faircloth. <laughs> Councilwoman Faircloth. Councilwoman Bailey. Thank, thank you, Mayor. This past Saturday, Art Walk Homestead presented the first Art in the Park. So this is our second year, and we decided to split the event in two. So Art in the Park will be the community outreach portion, and then in November, we will be hosting Art Walk Homestead, and that will be a kickoff to Art Basel here down in the south. Um, we had it at Blakey Park. It was pretty amazing, along with uh, the Southwest Advisory Committee. Um, I just wanted to say thank you, of course, to the police, the PAL gym, everybody at Parks and QRT. Um, we had officers in there with the kids doing art projects, and it was, it was a lot of fun. So thank you to my colleagues that came out and supported. We are also giving SWAC a little facelift. So we are looking for a new logo and we want to reach out in our community and have specifically the youth, but adults are welcome as well, to help us come up with a new logo. We want to, um, you know, not look like code enforcement when we're walking through, <laughs> no, no offense to code. Um, but yeah, so something fun, SWAC's got your back is our motto, and we just wanna do something fun and get the community involved. So if you would help me by sharing, we also have cityofhomestead.com slash SWAC with more information. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. Vice Mayor Burgess. Thank you. Um, through the manager to the Public Works Department, if they could, um, we've got a, uh, 142 meets 312 over there across from the hospital by the um, new racetrack gas station and, and, and that area which is built up with the new shopping center and all. And there's one turn lane that comes up and goes to the left and one lane that goes straight across to the hospital that's not used. <clears throat> I was wondering if we could do like we did down, down to the east there where 137 and 312 met. We just took the, the single turn lane and kept it and made the, sing the middle turn lane uh, available for two lanes because I see quite a backup over there um, during school hours and, and, and evening hours and I think if we could facilitate two turn lanes there to the left with the county somehow I think that would help to expedite 
the uh, the movement of our citizens over there. Okay. There are three lanes there presently, you know, a right turn lane, a center lane, and a, a dedicated left turn lane. So I'm looking to see if we could possibly turn the uh, straight lane that's in the center into a dual left-hand turn or, or a straight lane there. Uh, I know we did that pretty easily at 137 and 312 without much expense other than striping. Uh, so I'm wondering if we could do that. And then over on Kingman at the new, uh, which is 152, just to the south of Mowry there at the, the new um, uh, uh, homes that are being built, I, call, I think it's called Porto Vida. Um, we, we need to look at putting, uh, uh, reaching out to the county for no U-turns signs there. Uh, because what's happening is the school people are leaving Mowry, turning to the right, going south on Kingman, and taking that first and taking that their first option because it's quicker for them to come out and take a right than it is to try to get across all the traffic mm -hmm. uh, at, at dismissal or um, drop off in the mornings, and then they go down 100 yards and turn left. What happens is they stop and they take up at least one lane uh, to turn left, and then their nose is stuck across the other side of the median. Um, uh, hampering traffic on that side too so maybe we could look at uh, some uh, seeing if the county would uh, help us with some new no u-turn signs there um, uh, it's becoming uh, not at that and that's without any traffic coming in and out of that uh, neighborhood right now it's really becoming a, uh, an issue since that has been put in and maybe during the summer we can work on that and okay. uh, see if we could get something done there okay we will look at it thank you very much thank you mayor thank you vice mayor I just have one item, which is the appointment to the Education Advisory Committee of Deborah Ward. Um, she's a resident here of the city of Homestead. Her resume is attached as part of your packet. Uh, do I have a motion to move her onto the board? Move. Do it moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Ayes carry. That's all my business for tonight. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn? No, not yet. Yeah, we'll <laughs> moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>